Uh, thanks for waiting for us to get started here. Uh, I'm sitting here next to Jessica Dean. Uh, got her own uh, camera on, on her as well. Really excited uh, to have everybody here today. Um, Jessica has prepared a really fantastic presentation. We've been looking over for the last few days. And uh, really, this is something that's been developing probably over the last year almost. I mean, I feel yeah. like um, I've seen kind of evolutions of this and now it's a much more refined and, and impressive and uh, awesome. So very excited to have that. Um, let's, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and I'll turn off my mic and you turn on your mic and I think it'll work best that way. Okay, let me make sure that me. I'll mute myself. Perfect. Go. Perfect transition. Look at this. Teamwork. <laughs> yeah, no, it really has been about a year. It's actually kind of cool because we met at a Swamp Up back in May of last year. Yeah, and which is coming up again. I know. We're both going to be there again. Yeah. Imagine that. Swamp Up, JFrog. Uh, so, I am Jessica Dean. A little bit about me, my background. I am super into Linux, open source, containers, IT operations, uh, so not primary, primarily a developer background. Uh, and I don't often throw DevOps into that particular bullet point because I kind of feel like all four of those areas kind of imply DevOps. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how um, DevOps is really just kind of the world that we all live in at this point. Some non-technical things about me. I am super into CrossFit and training. So I try to drop into a CrossFit gym wherever I am, or at the very least a gym. And I'm usually doing crazy stuff that then people end up looking at me funny for. I'm also a huge Disney and Star Wars fan. And I don't just say that lightly. I, uh, I actually have Han Solo's blaster tattooed on me. <laughs> Luke Skywalker's hilt. I have a, a fandom crossover theme with some Star Wars quotes and Gallifreyan from Doctor Who. Plus, it, it used to be that you had to compete between Disney and Star Wars, and now you can just love them together. I can, and I yeah. can love Marvel now together. <laughs> I, I no longer have to cheat on my, my geeky loves. <laughs> and then one more thing that goes back to tech is uh, I'm also me a member of what we call the League of Extraordinary Cloud DevOps Advocates. So what that is is we are a team of cloud developer advocates or DevOps um, focused at Microsoft, and our job is to focus specifically on the DevOps culture and to kind of educate developers and IT operations on good and best, not good, best DevOps practices. What I love most about our team is we are actually really well balanced. Uh, we have Abel and Damien on the left there, uh, myself and Steven on the right. Uh, the right side tends to have more of an operations background. The left, including our fearless leader, Donovan Brown, has more of a developer background. So we really kind of get to embody that developer and operations, DevOps kind of culture we'll talk about today. And you can reach out to us by hashtagging on Twitter, L-O-E-C-D-A. That's actually like our bat signal. We'll get a notification in our Microsoft Teams room anytime that hashtag is used. And if you have a question or comment or want to talk about Star Wars, we'll all come to your rescue. A little bit more is while our team is awesome, we are only a small part of a larger cloud developer advocacy group at Microsoft. There's about 60 of us worldwide and we have all different focuses. So from Linux, open source, uh, ASP.NET, DevOps, machine learning, AI, IoT, we have some really um, amazingly talented individuals on our team who, who, if you have, again, any kind of issue, hashtag Azure Avengers or follow us on, at Azure Advocates, and you'll get 60 people coming to your rescue to answer your question. Yeah, I've pinged the team a few times on Twitter and found very responsive. Yeah, we, again, 60 people around the world. We have every time zone covered. It's pretty awesome. And now let's talk also about CodeFresh. Yeah, so uh, let's swap mics again. So we do the proper three, two, one. Hold mic. on. Oh, no. Uh, Otherwise, we're going to get this inception. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you what CodeFresh is. It's OK. Um, so CodeFresh, it, basically, the, what we found is that as people are adopting Kubernetes, uh, that there are so many things they need to figure out how to, how to build the images and store the images, how to deploy them, how to do the change management. And we found that uh, it would be really, really effective to build a platform that basically brought all these elements into one place. And so 
CodeFresh is really the workhorse engine of your engineering team and your DevOps team, where it's going to build your images, it's going to storm for you, it's going to connect all of your testing. It has built-in steps for working with Helm, et cetera. Really, it's, it's four main components. We have these Kubernetes CI CD pipelines. That, that means they're pipelines that are designed to get code onto Kubernetes and get it deployed. Um, there are uh, self-service environments, so you can actually spin up instance of instances of your application on demand, which you'll actually see today. Um, so you can basically get your full application suite, your full microservices architecture running. We have release management uh, through Helm, um, and then we have Docker and Helm registries uh, built in. So that's what CodeFresh is. So basically the goal is you wanna commit code, you wanna go through a build process, you wanna build your chart, you wanna run integration tests, performance tests, security tests, really functional tests mm -hmm. that take into account the microservice architecture and test the infrastructure code, right? Because with Helm and Docker, you can actually define the code for your infrastructure. So let's, let's test that and then let's push it all up and deploy it into production. That's what CodeFresh is and that's the, the intro um, for CodeFresh. And we'll get to see actually just how awesome that is today. One of the, I, I work with a lot of different CI CD tools, but one of the things that CodeFresh has that no other tool has is really visual, the ability to visualize your deployments with your Kubernetes clusters and with your Helm deployments, you actually have a built-in dash that's really powerful and insightful. So we'll show that today. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt, Jessica. Uh, yeah, I'll wear it because I, I, I'm <laughs> like, look, I'm even wearing my CodeFresh container shirt. I plan ahead. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of dive into it. I know we only have an hour and there's a lot to cover. So first off, we're going to go through a DevOps overview. Uh, and that's really essential so we can understand uh, more about container orchestration and how it plays into DevOps. Then we'll talk about Kubernetes. We'll talk about Helm. And then we'll go into a live demo. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about IT. And when I say IT, I mean the developer world and the operations world. We're changing and we're changing rapidly. This was a study that was done a few years ago by Gartner and we are going digital, if not some of us already have gone digital. They estimated in their study that by 2020, 1 million devices per hour would be coming online. 1 million. That's a lot of devices. The average age of an S&P 500 corporation by that same year would be 12 years of age. Compare that to the 1960s, where it was 60 years of age. And then I always save the last statistic for last, not only because it is last, but because I find this to be actually the most shocking. They estimate that 60% of computing would be done in the public cloud by 2025. But that's only about seven years away and we're already seeing such a shift to the cloud we're seeing workloads being run either in hybrid scenarios full cloud scenarios or on-prem companies already pushing for where's the cloud how do i get to the cloud you have your grandmother talking about the cloud but when she does it's the cloud there's air quotes. <laughs> i actually i told the story when i was in orlando i uh, i was having breakfast at this place called angelina's and there happened to be another uh, mother and daughter who was sitting next to me that spoke English. It was refreshing. So she asked what I do and what I was in Paris for. This was a few weeks ago. And I told her I work for Microsoft and I essentially am a public speaker. And so she said, she, she looks at me immediately and says, do you know where the cloud is? I said, I, I do know where the cloud is. Actually, I, I talk about the cloud constantly. It's where I work. I work, in the, I work in the cloud. Yeah. Well, her immediate reply when I told her I knew where it was, was I'm going to tell everyone I met the cloud. And the cloud's <laughs> name is Jessica. And I, I thought that was hilarious. But it's true, right? We have to start thinking about the cloud. And so from a Microsoft perspective, we wanted to take a poll from both developers and operations. So if you're on the dev side, Tell me if any of these sound familiar. I need to create applications at a competitive rate without worrying about IT. New applications run smoothly on my machine, but it malfunctions as soon as it hits your server, Mr. or Mrs. IT person, which I would get that all the time. It's, well, it works fine on my machine. Why, what's wrong with your server? And then the final is my productivity and application innovation become suspended when I have to wait on IT. So, I become the bottleneck for the developer. But then on the flip side, because we have to give love also to IT, what we end up hearing is that I need to manage servers and maintain compliance without any kind of disruption. So I can't 
just give you, Mr. and Mrs. Developer, access to my servers. Also, I'm unsure of how to integrate unfamiliar applications, and I need to work with you as the developer. Uh, I'm unable to focus on both server protection and application compliance. Like, there's really kind of this gap that we have to figure out how to meet between developers and operations. And that's really kind of where um, the conversation for a DevOps starts. In this particular slide.